Oh boy. Well, here we are, aren't we? Now, on our right, we have Mr. Roboto's Roamer, and on our left, we have the R&R Customs Warrior. Now, they both may or may not be based on a heap gladiator, but that is only a rumor that has been circulating around the outskirts of town. So, you know, we're just gonna orbit the camera around them just a little bit so you guys can see the differences as they spawn in. And there's a lot of different things you can do in terms of customization to both of these rigs. And we're gonna go on and dive into a couple of those. Now, I leave it up to all of you to draw your own conclusions on which one you prefer. This is not a comparison. This is basically just a look into both of these vehicles. And I figured that since they both hit Mod.io at around the same time, and they are both aimed at being console friendly, I figured we would dive into both of them and see what they're all about. Now, we've seen, obviously, a little bit of the in-development version of the r, &R Warrior on one of my streams before, but the other one we haven't really done much work with. So, we're going to go ahead and like I said before, dive into both of these and see what they're all about. First up is customization options. Now, like I said before, this is not a comparison. This is just hanging out with these both with both of these trucks, taking a look at them and putting them through their paces. So we're gonna grab the RR Warrior right off the bat. Now, this is a public uh, in development beta version of this thing, and there will be more added to it as time goes on. So let's go ahead and bring her into the dealership real quick. I should say, not quite the dealership, but more like the the garage. I don't know why I said dealership, but we start out with the 3.6 V6. Then you've got the three liter turbo diesel V6. And then of course you've got the 6.2 liter Hell Kitty V8. Now this thing obviously loads, loads of power and you're never necessarily going to be saying, huh, I think I need more power. So I'm going to actually go with the, uh, I think I'm going to go with the HP 90 A8. And let's see, we've got a few different suspension options, low center of gravity flex setup, lift kit, stock, and tow tuned. So there's a lot you can do with it. If you want to use it as a trail rig, hauler, um, like rock crawler, whatever it is, you're good to go there. We're going to go ahead and throw the lift kit on this one. And well, actually, I'm going back and forth. Look, I'm going back and forth. Lift kit for this one. Now, you start out with a 37, and you've got a big range of tire choices, including, actually, Puppy Master's Bug Tires. And then, as you make your way down, you get into the category of 40s. Now, let me just tell you, like, 40s on a Gladiator in real life looks so good. So freaking good. By the way, 40-inch BFG ATs. I'm normally not a big, like, all-terrain tire guy, but these look sick. Look how wide they are. And let's go ahead and actually see... I'm going to... Actually, for this for this particular test, I'm going to go ahead and throw on these ultra-wide 40-inch BFG ATs because they look sick. Now, tops-wise, whoa! We got a bed cap uh, both in body color and in black. We've got a stock top in black and a stock top in body color and a custom roll cage, which looks really good. Let's see if we can pair the roll cage with... Yo, you could pair the roll cage with a bed cap if you want. That is so cool! That's so freaking cool. You've also got a gooseneck hitch and a pintle hitch on the back. And then another rack up top. A couple different racks. That one applies to the cage, obviously. Then you've got a black hood or a body color hood. Multiple different toolbox options, which those go on the rack. And then doors, either black, stock, or tube doors. We're throwing tube doors on that one. And then you've also got a rack bag up top, but we're going to leave the toolboxes up there for now. And we can also put jerry cans either in the bed or for the mini roof rack. And actually, why don't we put them in the bed as well? Because we've got, like, we've got room. So we have a bunch of different wheel options. We've got the decoy wheels. And then we got a bunch of different color options in the methods. And I think for this particular build, we're going to leave the Jeep white and go with the red method wheels. And, of course, you've got a very wide variety of colors to choose from if you so please. So, as I said, you can go through and find pretty much any color option, even camo options. Like, if you're down for some of these camo options, which, honestly, I think they're really, really cool. Let's see if there's a, uh, oh, that looks, that looks really good. I just wish they were a little bit brighter, you know what I mean? I wish the color options were a tiny bit brighter, but they, they look great either way. I mean, they look really, really good, and I'm sure that out in the sun, they'll look even better. So let's go ahead and go with this sort of, uh, almost like an urban camo, snow-ish camo. You've also got beans on the dash! <laughs> There's only one, or the one and only, Beans. 
Now, of course, you can also um, hang a variety of options from the mirror as well. We'll do beans and dice. Good to go there. And, oh, man. All right. It's raining. We're, we're going to go ahead and change. There we go. This thing is absolutely nuts. Look at that. You want to talk about, like, freaking built and ready to go? That is wild. That is absolutely wild. All right, trailer-wise, you've got, obviously, right now we have the Pog trailers installed, but you also have a variety of Scout trailers, as well as the r, &R Gooseneck, which is huge. We know You know how much you can fit on that. Like, you can fit a ton, and I believe it's like a five unit in terms of cargo capability, too. You've also got the r, &R Wedge and, you know, generators, log carriers, so much stuff that you can do with this thing. You can do pretty much any type of objective-based gameplay and crawling and trailing. You've got so many options at your disposal, plus all that power. So we're gonna go ahead and actually shut that one down. Oh, actually, before we do that, you can also open the hood and reveal the absolutely glorious supercharged V8 underneath. So we're gonna go ahead and shut the hood now and stop the engine and we'll straighten the wheel out. And now we're gonna grab the roamer and see what we can do to that thing. Now, it does have a little bit of a roll cage coming out of the back right now. And I don't know if we'll be able to make it quite as big as that one. But again, they're both different flavors, right? It's up to you whichever flavor you want to go with. Now, engine-wise, we have stock, slightly OP, and very OP. For the purposes of this test, I think we'll probably go for the actual OP engine. And gearbox-wise, stock, highway, and off-road. Very simple. So we're going to go with the off-road. Suspension-wise, you've got stock. Lifted, which is kind of like a small lift. I bet you that's almost to replicate sort of the Mopar uh, two to two and a half inch lift. Skyjacker, which is, you know, big lift and then toe setup. We're going to go with the Skyjacker setup. And we've got a 31 BFG MT, 35 BFG MT, 38, 35, 39, and 44 in a different, uh, in a different compound, of course. So the biggest you can go on the BFG is a 38. The biggest you can go on the other tire is a 44. So let's see actually how that tire size kind of looks. That's very tall. And that might be a little flippy. That might be a little flippy, but we'll see. Got that off-road bumper, which looks sick. And you actually have all this other stuff installed by default. But the cool thing is about this one, you can put the off-road bumper on and then you can just take the doors off as an option. And let's see. Whoa! Okay. Um... Let's see. Mm. I I like taking the fenders off, but I don't like the fact that the grill disappears with the fenders. That's kind of weird. I don't know. That might just be a modeling thing, but we'll see. There's a single wheel option for those particular tires. And then, of course, again, you have a full range of colors to choose from, which, again, do look really, really good. That looks awesome in that gray. The gray looks great. I have to, I have to admit, the gray looks really, really, really good. So we'll go with that red. And then, of course, you got beans on the dash. And then we will throw, let's say, hmm, we'll throw, hmm, let's say Pine Forest from the mirror of this one. So a little bit of a slightly shorter customization process, but it does look good. All right, let's back her on up real quick. And now you can see right off the bat too, when you put these things, you know, out here together, that they're both designed for different purposes, it looks like. Like, say, for example, this with the high setup looks more like a mud setup, whereas the other one with the high setup definitely looks more like a trail slash crawl setup. So now we're going to go ahead and put it through a couple of tests. Not necessarily the full test circuit, but at least, you know, a few obstacles. So we're going to get back in the r, &R Warrior now. And it's definitely a very different feel, like, right off the bat. So you're going to come with us. And it's not that it needs to be towed. We're just going to, you know, encourage it to come this direction with us. Check to make sure no traffic is coming. But who am I kidding? There's not going to be any traffic on the freaking testing grounds. They definitely look like two very different styles of Jeeps. You know what I mean? Very different styles, very different builds, but different tastes. You know what I mean? Like, different people go for different tastes. And that's, you know, that's, you're always going to have that in automotive customization. So let's see how they both do. They're, they're both, I'm sure they're going to destroy the freaking hill climb. But just to see, let's see how they do. All right, you're going to be right there. All right, let's ease it on down. Now, we're going to park both at the bottom and then kick them into high right off the bat. So three, two, one, go. They've even got a little bit of supercharger wine in there. That thing absolutely monstered it. No question about that. All right, stop that guy's engine, grab the roamer, fire it up. 
let's see how you do. Park it in the same spot. Three, two, one, go. Kick it into high. Again, monstered it right up. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, swap on over. There's a lot of truck switching going on, but, you know, that's what happens sometimes when you test two vehicles at the same time. Now, this doesn't necessarily have the flexi suspension on it right now, but even still, I'm going to test it because I do like the low center of gravity suspension. It does flex super well. It just doesn't give you quite as much lift. So, oh my god, it doesn't even want to go up there. Hold on. Dude, it literally just kicks me right back off again. Okay, that's that's a little weird how it seems to, like, refuse me. So, okay, so that's... It's not a crazy amount of flex, but it's, you know, enough. Let's see what happens when we put the low uh, center of gravity suspension on it. Yeah, already you can see, wow, that flex is a big improvement. This is definitely the suspension you're going to want if you're going to be, like, twisting this thing up on the trails or in the rocks. It's definitely going to give you the balance and the flexibility that you're looking for. I mean, and it just tucks those tires. Whoa! He's right on down. Beasted the crawling portion of the test. Absolutely beasted it. All right. Now, I'm sure the other one will probably beast it as well, but let's just see. Fire you up. Let's go. Now, this suspension is most likely a sort of an in-between spec. Let's see. So it's got some decent flex to it. I mean, you got to remember, we're like, you got a freaking 44 on the thing. And that's definitely going to make the, uh, make the top heaviness a little bit worse. But it also is going to make it so that it can roll over almost whatever it wants to roll over. So, like, driving over obstacles is not really going to be an issue with a 44. But I think at that point, your tire is doing more work for you than your suspension. So... It won't really, like, what this thing might lack in flex, it's going to make up for in just sheer tire size. Let's ease it back on down. Again, beasted its way right over the obstacle, albeit in a slightly different way, but it still got there nonetheless, you know? And that's, that's, that's the important thing. It still got there. So let's see how you do with these ATs in the mud. The ATs in the mud might be a little weird, and the fact that they're very wide. Now, the SnowRunner physics system doesn't really care too much for wide tires in the mud, and I'm sure that if we went to a narrower tire, it would do better. And as a matter of fact, let's see what happens when we do just that. So let's see. Big boy Baja MTZ, potentially. Right off the bat, I can tell you it feels better. Definitely feels more sure of itself. But yeah, you take it in there and like, okay, even these are not necessarily the best set up for mud. Uh, just because I think there's, there's better mud tires out there. And this really isn't necessarily meant to be a mud monster. It's meant to be a all-purpose vehicle plus a trail riding vehicle that, that can also do some rock crawling. And we did test that out on one of our previous streams with the development version. Now, this is still technically a development version. It's a public beta. So it's a lot further along than it was when I last drove it, but I'm sure it will get more features uh, down the line in the future. Let's ease it up on out. There we go. And make our way back out of the mud. Now, I'm not going to take either of these in the pond. I definitely think that the pond is a little bit extreme for both of these uh, because they will probably sink in there. But let's see how the Roamer gets on with these 44s. High with the off-road boxes. Slow. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it means actually that high range in this thing is going to be very usable. But it is surprisingly slow. Yeah, high in this is like low plus almost in the other one. That's wild. Oh, she's yeah, she's starting to complain a little bit. She's a little like, eh, I don't know about this. But you put it in low plus and it's good to go. Oh, wow. Whoa, okay. Actually, the other one was, real, was really pulling it through here in low plus. This one, you put it in low and it's fine. But I think that's probably just a difference in gear ratio and tire tuning. But they, they both have... They're interesting ups and downs. They really do. What's up, Beans? How you doing, bud? How you doing, my dude? Come on. Come on. You got this. You can do it. There you go. It found some grip. It found some grip, all right. Let's get it. Come on. Let's get it. Oh, you're almost there, bro. You're almost there. You're almost there. Don't bog now. Come on. I love those seats, though. It does give us a moment to appreciate the interior. The seats are sick. 
Oh my god. Make your way out. Wow, low pl or sorry, low minus, the speed didn't change. That goes to show you how thick the mud is. It's really having to freaking work. All right, so now that you guys have seen how these both do on the rocks and how they both do in the mud, I don't necessarily think we need to hit the, uh, the dips obstacles with these, but what we are going to hit is the bridge jump. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use this guy, since we're already in it anyway, to bring the r, &R warrior out to the bridge jump, and we're going to attempt the bridge jump with both of these. Now, let me know in the comments section down below which one you'd be either driving home or which one you'd be taking off the bridge jump, because I'm sure there's, like, some people are going to take one, some people are going to take the other, and again, that's just personal preference. That's how that works, you know? Like, we all have what we like in terms of trucks. So, man, that off-road gearbox, even in fourth gear, it's not that fast. But then again, I mean, it really does tell you and show you when you drive it that the off-road gearbox is meant for just that off-road you know slow crawling trail riding and getting through some light mud so it really definitely does not compromise on you know like in terms well it does compromise in terms of speed but it does not compromise in other areas for this thing's gearbox for sure now i will remember to obviously put the highway gearbox in this one before we take it off the jump that's very 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 important if you don't remember to do that, you're not going to get your full potential off the jump. So right here at the bottom of the hill, I'm going to disconnect the warrior and let you chill right there for a bit. And then this guy is going to get a big boy engine and transmission, which has already got the big boy engine. Let's see. I believe option one. That's a five speed. Option zero is a four speed. Okay, so five speed is going to be the way to go. Now, let's change time again because, yep, there we go. That's good. Good to go. All right. Five speed for this one in terms of a sort of more road going setup. And it is quick. It feels quick. I'm not going to do the neutral trick. I want to base this solely off of gearing. Go, 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 go. And not bad. Not bad. I mean, the front axle landed just about right at the barrels. Now we're gonna grab the warrior and it's already fired up, but I'm gonna make sure that we have, let's see, what's gearbox two? How many gears do we have in that? Six? Oh God, it's gonna be different ratios of the same thing, isn't it? Oh boy. Different ratios, but same amount of gears. Ah! Oh, I'm, oh, I'm confused. All right, I'm just gonna guess and go with gearbox two. That may or may not be the best option, but if it feels fast, chances are it might be. So that's a six speed. We got one more gear. Yeah, I don't think that's that fast. Let's try gearbox one. Let's back it up just a little bit. I mean, heck, if that's going to be the fastest we can get it up to, then we'll have to see. Now, granted, again, it's not made to be fast, but I want to give it one more shot with a different gearbox. Let's just try right from here. There's fifth. There's sixth. I mean, it feels about the same. Yeah, it's definitely not going to be a speed machine, but at the same time, it made that landing very, very, very manageable. Very manageable for sure. Well, if you guys enjoyed this side-by-side -side test and this side-by-side -side macho case, definitely make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time.